morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, wherever you're watching this. Welcome to In Conversation With. We're back for a second series and we're really excited uh, to share these new episodes with you. We've got some great people uh, sharing their testimony with us. Um, so do join with us uh, over the coming weeks uh, as we release episodes. We're going to be doing two episodes a week coming out on a Tuesday and a Thursday uh, afternoon. So we're really excited to share those with you. Um, hopefully you might have seen some of the first series and I hope you've enjoyed them. If not, do go back and check them out. But it's great to have you with us if it's your first time watching. Uh, the idea of this podcast is very simple. We basically just want to share the gospel of Jesus with as, as many people as possible. Share how Jesus can work in, in anybody's life, no matter who you are or what you've done, how he can change lives and how he can change your life as well. Um, so I'll just introduce myself as well. Uh, my name is James. I'm from Crown Lane Free Methodist Church. Um, and I'll be hosting all these podcast episodes and interviewing uh, the guests that are coming on. Um, so sit back uh, and I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of this episode. Okay, so today it's great to be joined by and to be in conversation with uh, Sue Gilmore. Sue, it's, it's great to have you join with us today. Thank you for coming along. Um, could you perhaps give us a quick introduction of yourself for us? Yeah, uh, my name is Sue, Sue Gilmore. Um, I uh, originally come from Leeds, but I've, I've lived in Carnforth now for over 30 years. Well, I lived at Cape and Ray first, now I'm in Carnforth. So I feel like I've moved from being a Yorkshire lass to a Lancashire lass. But don't tell my family I said that. <laughs> oh, brilliant. No, I'll try, I'll try my best not to. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, pleased. <laughs> so, Sue, so you, you said that you grew up in, in Leeds, uh -huh. um, in Yorkshire. So what, what was your kind of early life like? You know, how was your childhood? What did yeah. you get up to? Well, you probably, you probably don't want to know everything I got up to. <laughs> Um, but I was raised in a family with um, six brothers and one sister. Uh, my mama was Greek and my father was English. So we had a, um, a very uh, interesting childhood. We were each other's friends. We grew up playing. Most of my memories as a child is playing outside in the woods or in the garden or bonfires or paddling in streams. So it was a very happy childhood. Um, until uh, about, um, I was about 12, I think, 11 or 12, uh, my uh, mum actually left the family home. We woke up one morning and she wasn't there. She'd actually run away with the coal man. And uh, she'd left my father, who by this time was an alcoholic and quite violent. And we as children saw this, but um, there's nothing we could do about it. My eldest, uh, three eldest brothers were often in fights with him to try and um, stop him being so violent with us all. But um, so that was a huge, a huge part of my um, childhood, which I don't often talk about and I don't often go back to just because it was it was quite um, traumatic. Um, but my mom um, gave me, she was a very strong woman. She had a strong work ethic and she had a fantastic sense of humour. So she could laugh at herself and she could make us laugh. So I get my strong work ethic from my mom and my sense of humour, which, uh, like my mum, is sometimes out of control. Um, so I would sometimes be in meetings at the hall and probably say things I shouldn't, but it's OK. And uh, my father, um, even though he's an, an alcoholic, he was a very hardworking man. And um, he gave me my love of reading and my love of walking. So. Though the early years were, were 
I remember them with a lot of affection and my certainly my siblings were very close. We were each other's friends and did everything together, which then helped when our family was suddenly broken up with mum doing the unthinkable. I mean, this was in the 19, oh, 19, what would it have been in the 1960s, which was unheard of for parents to leave the families. Certainly a divorce was unthinkable. But um, yeah, I'd actually just become a Christian. So that was huge in helping me to navigate what it would mean. Um, so I could tell you how I became a Christian in that, James. Um, when I was 10, I remember it very clearly, because we lived outdoors with my brothers, I would often say, why don't the stars fall out of the sky? I was mesmerized by the night sky and stars. And we would lay on our backs in the garden and just look up at the sky and wonder why things didn't fall out of the sky. And no, no one could ever answer the questions. We'd, there was no scientists in our family. We would just make stories about it. And um, someone said to me at school, you need to get a, that God keeps the stars in the skies. And my mum was Greek. Um, she was a Greek Orthodox. So we had icons in the home. No Christian upbringing whatsoever. But at the school, this says God. And I says, well, who is this God? And I remember a teacher saying, you can um, find out about him in a Bible. So I was 10 and my parents asked me what I wanted for Christmas. And I said a Bible, which was a shock to everybody. Um, so much so they didn't know where to get a Bible. Um, but they asked my teacher at school and she got it for me. And that began my search for the Lord. I thought, well, who is this God? And uh, for two years, I went to different churches. And uh, I don't know if you've seen that film, Mr. Bean, where he goes to church and the minister's speaking and it's, it's like a foreign language. Well, I sat in the sometimes the front row and I'd look up at the minister in this pulpit and he would be talking I'm thinking I don't think he speaks the same language as me and I would just get up and walk out because I didn't understand it I went to another church a Baptist church and uh, they they weren't so pleased to have this girl come in who was I was very scruffy very I was a ragamuffin um, and they, they didn't treat me very nicely. I thought, I don't think I want to go to that church. Then I tried another church and I thought, no one would sit with me. No one would kind of talk to me. So I left it and just read my Bible. I still have it. I had a clue what I was reading. But at 12, I, uh, 11, I went to a high school and... Uh, the first people I met on the school bus were four girls who were Christians. And I said to my brother, I'm going to sit with you and your pals. And he said, you can't sit with us. You can't have a girl with us. It's just the boys. And we, this was a shock because we'd done everything. To get. I said, well, we always do everything. He said, you can't sit with us. And this conversation went on. And this girl said, you can sit with us if you like. I thought, who talks like that? this squeaky voice. Anyway, cut a long story short, these four girls who are my friends today, still my friends today, invited me to a brethren church that they went to. And I began to hear not just about God, they talked about Jesus, they talked about a cross, they talked about a God who loved, uh, enough to demonstrate it, to show it. And I have come, come from a family where there was violence, there was abuse, there was neglect, there was a lot of difficult things that I was dealing with. And suddenly this, I heard about this saviour, this Jesus. 
and my heart just like a flower opened to this man who loved me enough to dine across for me. And it was in that Brethren Church after many uh, Sundays of going that I gave my life to Christ. And um, it was very simple. I stayed behind with my these four girls who were all young Christians, who I was their trophy. I was there, they were very excited, I remember. And I, I it just felt like my eyes were opened. Now I've got, I, now I understand he's the creator God. Of course, he can put stars in the sky. Of course, he can make flowers blossom. I've always loved creation. And so March 1965, I think it was a very long time ago. I prayed a very simple prayer. Lord, uh, come into my heart, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And he did. He did. And I knew it. I can't tell you how I knew it, but I just knew it. And that began a relationship, a friendship uh, uh, that continues today. Super. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sue. Um, just wonder, you, you touched on it a little bit at the end there. You know, what was there kind of an immediate change in, in you or, you know, kind of how did coming to know Jesus make a difference to you and in, in your life? Well, um, I, I've always been bossy. I'm the eldest girl and I had to find my place in a family of six boys. My sister is very gentle. We're, we're very different, very close, but she's very gentle. Um, and I, not that I'm not gentle, but I can talk. Yeah, anyway. Um, I would come home from the meetings and because there were four of us in, a, in one bed and three in another bed, um, my eldest brother was able to have his own bed, but the rest of us shared these two beds. I would literally tell them what I'd heard. We would sing the choruses. I taught them the choruses, deep and wide, deep and wide. Um, and my family became my first congregation all the time knowing um, that the, there were arguments going on, there was things not right with my parents. But my mum said to me before she left, um, she said, Sue, since you've been going to church, you've, you've, you don't have a temper anymore. Now, if you know anything about the Mediterraneans, they have, they're very tempestuous people. And out of all my siblings, I was most like my mum, who would flare up, but then after it was all over, she'd get mad and it was done. Only I would flare up and want to fight. And I'd fight my brothers and I was always right and I was never wrong. And I had a terrible, terrible temper. And it came out at school if a teacher said something I didn't like, I would, to my shame, I would want to fight the teacher. So when I gave my life to Jesus, it was as though I, I wasn't aware of it. I didn't need to fight anymore. And my, I, never, I can still remember my mom saying, you, do, you, you, you don't have a temper. You don't fight anymore. And then I said to her, that's because of Jesus. It's not because of me, mom. I, I, it just stopped, and to this day, there's many things I have wrong, but I don't have a temper, for which I'm grateful because it was quite horrible. Um, that was one of the big obvious changes that pe my family saw immediately. The other change was I began to have a hunger for truth. I wanted to know. I didn't want to be bothered playing games anymore. So I would read the Bible. I would want to ask questions. I went to every meeting at the church. I wanted to know this God. And while my four friends were still playing, uh, they would be playing games and 
I would be at the prayer meeting because I wanted to know this God. And the Bible became for me this kind of book into the heart of God that began then and still continues today. So that appetite, I like to think has never gone away. And of course, at that time, um, I just give my life to the Lord. My mum, um, it was in May, we woke up, she'd left. Suddenly at 12, I had to become an adult and I had to care for my uh, brothers and my father who was not a, uh, he, he was a lovely man, but he was a weak man and he, the drink got him. But I suddenly found I was an adult in, in a child's body, caring for everybody. And God gave me the strength to do that. I couldn't have done it in any other way, but for, so I, I never had a teenage years, which is probably just as well, because I think I might have gone a bit crazy. But yeah, God kept me, so yeah. Great. Um and so, you know, you became a Christian quite young, mm. and um, you said it was 1965, so it's a, li a little bit of time has passed since then. <laughs> <laughs> has very it, has kind, it, James, very kind. <laughs> has, it, has it always been, you know, plain sailing oh. since, since then, you know, because there's a, I think there can be a, a thought sometimes, Cartner, that, that Christians never go through yeah. tough times and difficult moments. Yeah. You know, yeah. is that the case? Well, it's not been for me. I feel as though, though the Lord has never, ever let me down, he has allowed me to go through some very difficult times. So as I was growing up as a young woman, all my friends got married, all four of my friends got married, and I didn't. And it was as though the Lord was saying, not now, soon, not now. Well, He's still saying not now. And I, I, who knows what might happen? But as a young woman, that was a very difficult journey to watch everybody getting married, my friends, and they would praise the Lord that they'd found these wonderful husbands. And, and I would, Lord, why? What is wrong with me? I always thought there was something wrong with me. But it's always in looking back, I see the Lord prepared me for my work and ministry at Cape and Ray. I couldn't have come and lived at Cape and Ray if I was married, doing what I did. Um, so many hours a day working with students and being involved in their lives. Um, so anyway, my, my working at Cape and Ray, my students became my family. Um, so that was a difficult time in my teenage years, having to deal with feeling as though God was not giving me something and yet he was giving something else. He was giving me himself. So I'm not married, still not married, but God has filled my life in ways I could have never, never thought possible. And then I've gone through periods where I was a, a period of a few months in those times where uh, I had my heart broken, my body was broken, I, I was involved in, uh, I had, a, had to have surgery on my back, my back, which was quite serious, and at the same time, it, there was a broken relationship, and I just felt my spirit was broken, and God had taken everything, my health, and um, and what God did was, through that time that was very difficult, he just just poured himself he just gave me promise after promise and uh, filled the gaps that were there um, in some beautiful ways so that was a period of time that was very difficult and then I have loved my years working at Cape and Ray I worked there for over 30 years but it was not easy some people say if you work in a Christian place it must be like heaven and I say, if it is, I'm not going. Because at times working in a Christian place, it was very difficult. Difficult for me to come under authority when I thought my, I thought I knew better. And I, um, 
and then dealing with um, through those years, I had a brother that died to cancer. And I was very close to a, a student, this is in the same year, um, a nephew died, it was the same year that Major Thomas died and I'd seen Major Thomas in the hospital the day before he died, as with Mrs. Thomas. I had, um, my sister-in-law died to a brain tumor. My nephew of 17 died of a heart condition. And um, then a girl, a student that I mentored every week um, through her Italian Bible school, left, went home and with a week of getting home, she was killed in a very tragic car accident. So for that summer, it was like one death after another. And that was hard to navigate that grief and wondering two young people, my nephew and this girl, both eight, 18, and the Lord chose to take them. So that was difficult, but again, God provided the comfort that I needed to just keep going one step at a time, one day at a time, and allowing him to uh, comfort me in a way that nobody else could. And when I think because I don't have a husband to be there, I have found the Lord to be the one that ministers to me in a way that is very precious, that he is the one that then at the end of the day says, so it's okay, I I'm with you, I'm not going to let you go, and um, yeah, yeah. So the quick answer is it's not plain sailing once we give our life to Jesus. But I tell you this, it's, it's the, it, there's nothing like it. I wouldn't want the alternative of not following him, even though following him sometimes means tears. Thank you, Sue. Um, so you, you've touched on it a little bit in, in some of your answers um, about kind of what you've done for the last 30 years or so, if you maybe share with us a little bit about, about that, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, um, when I cared for my family, my as my mum left, it's too long a story to tell, but um, finally my younger siblings were with mum and her new husband. My father was, I was caring for him, but and my brothers had all got married and it was just me with my dad and he became violent and I couldn't, it wasn't safe for me to live with him. So my brothers got in his own house and I went to live with my mom and her new husband. And at that time I felt God calling me to um, actually be a missionary. I'd gone to a, on holiday with my friends from church and I can't explain it, but in one of the meetings, I felt the Lord saying to me, will you follow me, Sue? And I remember saying, I'm following you. What do you mean, will you follow me? And then another night, again, this voice saying, Sue, will you follow me? And I turned to my friends and said, what is he saying? Will you follow me? And they said, oh, you, you, they, they didn't understand it either. So I literally ignored it. And the following year, I went to the same place. It's a Christian holiday in a missionary um, centre up in, Glas in Scotland. And again, God, God was speaking to me very powerfully. And so I remember one night saying, yes, I'll follow you, whatever you want me to do. And so I shared it with my elders and they said, you maybe need to go to Bible school. Before you go to Bible college, go to Bible school to make sure that's where God is leading you, test it. So they'd, I'd never heard of Cape and Ray. They, my elder, one of my elders told me about Cape and Ray. I didn't have the money for the whole year, I just had enough for September to December. And I thought, well, God, if you want me to go, you'll have to provide the money. So uh, this is the first time I'd left home. And, uh, and, People might not believe this, but I went with, I only had three outfits, uh, an outfit for Sunday, 
and then two other outfits that I wore throughout the week. Um, we were very poor, but we were always well fed and we were warm and we but we were poor. And I, I remember arriving at Cape and Ray and uh, going through that huge front door, walking into the lounge hall area. It was just full of these loud Americans. And I thought, who are these people? And I looked at them in their clothes and I turned round and the guy who picked me up says, where are you going? I said, I don't think this is for me. I think I've come to the wrong place. But he was very wise. He says, no, just, just stay, Sue. And so I did 1972. I went to Bible school. And though and the thing I loved about Bible school was Bible knowledge. I was hungry to learn. And so I learned many things, lots of things. Um, but the biggest thing I learned in those uh, months was how to have a quiet time. I began to grow a relationship with God that was based on time spent with him in the morning at different times throughout the day. And yeah, uh, one of those noisy, loud American girls became a close friend. She came home with me at Christmas, spent time with my family. She thought we were all crazy. Um, but her sister paid for me to do the second term. So I did the second term. And then Mrs. Thomas asked me to work on staff during the spring school. I worked during the day in the dining halls and then in the evenings I went to class. So I was 72, 73. Then I went to Bible college for three years, fully convinced I was gonna to go to Africa or some out of, Mong out of Mongolia. But God called me home to Leeds and it broke my heart. I said, God, not Leeds, anywhere but Leeds. And I went back and I worked with my church for 13 years. And they were precious times. I learned, I learned how to care for people. I did door to door, which I hate to this day, but I did it. I met some tragic stories and grew some amazing friendships, did children's work, youth work. And then one day I got a phone call from Mark Thomas saying, Sue, so would you come to Cape and Ray? We'd like to come and work with Angela Mills. Well, I thought Angela Mills was like Mother Teresa. I thought, I can't work with Angela Mills, she's too. And then I came to work with her, I realized she's not Mother Teresa. <laughs> so yeah, so then after those 13 years though, James were what trained me for my time in Bible school. They were difficult years, but I'll never forget, I drove into the courtyard at Cape Ray in 1987. And it wasn't easy. I had a brother at that time who was dying with cancer. It was very difficult to leave my family. They didn't understand. They still don't know the Lord. But I remember driving into the courtyard. I got out of my car and suddenly I felt like a round peg in a round hole. So I just knew I was home. I was home doing what God had been preparing me for. So I was at Cape Ray for over 30 years. Yeah, I loved it. Loved every minute of it. I never got tired of getting up and going to work. So then I retired a year ago. So, yeah. Um, well, just as we uh, bring this interview to a close, Sue, mm -hmm. just one, one more question. Um, you know, we're living in some very strange and, and uncertain times and it kind of feels like, you know, COVID has been with us forever, hasn't it? Um, yeah. You know, people who might be watching this, you know, could you give them some advice or, or hope for, you know, these days and kind of looking ahead? Right, right. I can only do it as I... Um, Think about lockdown for me, I'm on my own. Um, but I, in these times of lockdown, I'm, uh, my hope is in knowing that no matter what's going on in our world and it's tragic, and I have a brother who right now is in a hospital with COVID. I was just taken in uh, yesterday. Um, so these are 
these are very strange and surreal times, but God has not changed. And our hope is in a God who continues to uh, speak, a God who continues to reach out to us, a God who still wants to have a relationship with us, a God who walks with us even in lockdown. I, I may be in lockdown, but I'm not locked out of God's sight or of his hearing. God sees, God hears. And I, I, I wonder if this is not an opportunity for people to cry out to God. And some might need to say, God, where are you? I think for many of us, this is an opportunity to grow in our dependency on God, grow in our relationship with him, because we've got time. We've, we, we have time. Many are not working. Um, so for me, I would only encourage people to just develop, grow, cultivate a relationship with Jesus that stands the test of time. He doesn't change. He's still calling people. And he, he doesn't make mistakes. He can be trusted. Um, and that's, for me, I, I, I continue to encourage myself with these truths from his word that um, just don't change. Um, well, thank you uh, very much, Sue. Thank you for what you've, you've shared. Um, for your openness. Um, and, and Sue has, has shared with us how God has completely changed her life. And, and, and as you watch, it can be the same for you too. You know, God can change your life no matter who you are, what you've done, where you're at. You know, God can completely change your life. And, and you just need to admit your need of him and, and want to live your life for him. Um, so in each of these podcast episodes, we want to give you um, that opportunity that if you are uh, serious about wanting to come to know Jesus, we want to give you that opportunity. So I'm just going to pray in a moment and, and just follow along with this prayer if, if you want to take that step uh, and become a follower of Jesus. So let's, let's pray. Father God, thank you that we can come to know you. Thank you that you sent your son to that cross for my sin. And I pray that in this time I might come to know you and that over the days and weeks to come I will live for you. I will live my whole life for you. I will grow to know you and to love you. I just pray that you'll help me in these things. I pray this in your name. Amen. Well, if you um, prayed that prayer or, or are wondering about praying that prayer, you know, we would love to know because it is such a, an encouraging thing and it is such a wonderful thing to know that, that you have come to know Jesus. And, and as well, we'd love to support you and help you in this time, whether by sending you a Bible or some uh, literature or <coughs> praying for you or, or anything like that, um, you know, the best thing to do um, is to get to know God's Word. As Sue said, you know, she got a hold of a Bible and she just wanted to, to read it. And, and that's the best thing that you can do. Um, so please do get in touch um, if you've taken that step or thinking about taking that step. If you've got any questions or, or, or if you like prayer, for anything, then then do uh, get in touch as well, and we can we can help and support you uh, in these times. Um, so all that's left to do now is say thank you very much, Sue, for coming well, along and, and sharing. Uh, it's been great to have you. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you for asking me. No problem. Thank you to to everyone at home as well for watching along. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you again very soon for another episode of In Conversation with. Bye. Bye.